So far with the quadratic equations that we had, we could simply just factorize them. However, not all quadratics will be as simple as simple to factorize. For example, all quadratics can be written in this way. ax squared plus bx plus c. a, b, and c, they can be any number. However, a cannot be zero. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a quadratic. When this happens, we can simply apply what we call the quadratic formula, which is basically a way to find the possible values for x. So this is given by negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Oftenly, we call this thing inside of the square root here, b squared minus 4ac as delta. And, well, basically because this provides us uh, an insight of how those solutions are. If this number is larger than zero, then you will have two solutions. When this number is equal to zero, well, you will also have two solutions, however, they are the same. Or you could just say that you have one solution or two equal solutions. In this first case, they will be different. In the last case, if delta is less than zero, then this means that the square root cannot be solved, at least not using real numbers. Therefore, there will be no real solution for that x. What I would like to show you today is the actual proof to that equation. Well, to, to that formula. So, let's start by just writing down what do we mean by quadratic. Now, if we divide everything by a, we would get x squared plus b over a x plus c over a is equal to zero. Since I have divided everything by a, I haven't changed anything, right? This is still equal to zero. If I divide zero by a, it's still zero. Now, let's get this constant term to the other side. So we would have x squared plus b over a x is equal to negative c over a. Now, if we observe what we have on the left-hand side, it's almost a square, right? So what we're going to do here, we will fill, we'll complete the squares. So let's fill what we need in there. So since this is b over a x, we would need our last term here to be b over 2a, right? This is two times and obviously squared. Since we have added this on the left-hand side, we'll also have to add this on the right-hand side. Right? So, now we may complete this square. So, that will become x plus b over 2a squared. On the right-hand side, we may try to join those two fractions and to do so we will have to make those denominators the same so let me just show you how the, that would become so this would be minus c over a plus b squared over 4a squared so um, if we want to get the same denominator here I will have to multiply this first term by 4a so this would be minus 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared. Notice this first term here is basically c, negative c that I had before, but I've multiplied by 4a. So I would have the same denominator and I wouldn't be able to join those two fractions. So all of this is equal to, and I'll just change the order because it doesn't matter, b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Now, we do have a square on the left-hand side, 
and we want to get rid of it because we want to make x our subject. So what we're going to do here, well, let's get the square root on both sides. So we would then get x plus b over 2a is equal to the square root of all of this. Um, so what's on top? I'll just leave as the square root. But what's down below? I can actually get the square root. So 4 square root is 2 and a square root is um, a square square root is a. So over 2a. Now um, we just have to remember that this will be plus or minus because since this number was a square I can have either this positive number be multiplied by itself and I would have that square or I may have the negative number as well and and I would also have that square so when we extract the roots we need to take into account that the number that we had might be positive or negative and when squared it will always be positive positive. and now simply we want to get this b over 2a to the other side because we want to make x our subject so x is well it was b over 2a so it will become minus b over 2a plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a and those denominators they're the same so we may rewrite that joining those two so minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a and that is our quadratic formula and we'll be using it uh, for example when we're not able to factorize or when the factorization is not that simple if you may factorize go for it because this is not a simple equation it's not a simple formula um, however you may use it for example to find real numbers when your for example your zeros um, they are 1.5 they are like 2 point something or square roots right so this formula here um, is useful when when your roots when your zeros are not integer numbers so when they are for example thirds and etc and that's it